Today, we've got the pleasure of hosting uh, Edwin H. Gandhi, who is the Managing Partner and Chief Executive Officer at Cyton Investments Management PLC. Cyton is an alternative investment manager focused on real estate and private equity, serving high net worth, the diaspora, institutional investors, and specializing in master planned and gated community developments. Cyton is ubiquitous, I, you know, it kind of, it's somebody described to me what a bow wave is. A bow wave is, before you meet somebody, you've already experienced uh, uh, something about them. And for, for, for Cyton, wherever you turn, on the, on the highway, the advertisements, the developments, so there's been a very big bow wave for uh, Edwin before he came to MindSpeak. Prior to co-founding Cyton, he led a team that transformed Britam Asset Managers to the leading locally managed alternative investments manager in Kenya before the team left to form Cyton. Edwin started his career at KPMG New Jersey as an auditor served as an investment banker with Lehman Brothers and Bank of America Merrill in New York, where he focused on mergers and acquisitions, debt, equity capital raising for financial institutions. He holds an MBA from one of the most prestigious schools in the States, Wharton, University of Pennsylvania, a Bachelor of Science in Accounting from Monmouth University, and he's a certified public accountant in the state of New Jersey. Edwin has been recognized by the Institut Choiseul Top 200 Business Leaders in Africa in 2014, Business Daily Africa Top 40 Under 40 2012, and, the, and in the Who's Who in American colleges and universities. A couple of my own observations. So I saw all these adverts, and then I wasn't sure what exactly Saiton was doing. I saw the developments. And then when I went to meet Edwin uh, uh, twice, and uh, I came away from my meeting, like the day I came away from my meeting with Dr. James Mwangi, when I came back to Kenya 11 years ago. And a lot of people have been telling me something, and when I sat in front of them, I realized this is the guy, he knows what he's doing, and that that you know, he's building a business which is going to be seriously substantial. So it's a real privilege to have Edwin here today and to tell us his story and how he's now created a pipeline of $800 million of real estate investments, among many other things. So it's a real pleasure, Edwin, to have you take the floor. Edwin Dandy. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for taking the time to be with us this morning, just to get to hear what is investments, what is Cyton, and uh, any other thing that you have in mind. Um, and told me that we have two hours. The goal is to take the first 30 minutes just introducing Cyton and what we do. And then uh, the most important part is to get to discuss, get to you have in mind, hopefully learn something from us and I also get to, uh, we also get to learn something uh, from you. Now I have a couple of slides which I'll use just as a backdrop. Uh, most of it is going to be discussions. Uh, anything worth doing, as uh, Steve Jobs says, is done in the context of a team. So the first thing I want to do is at, at least to introduce the Cyton uh, team members who are here. Uh, I would say associate level and above. Associate at Cyton means uh, below uh, manager. So if somebody could just help me with a microphone, if you are associate level and above, just stand up, say your name and what you do, so that at least uh, people know members of the team who are with us. Good morning, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Nkuku. I head the real estate team and, see, and I'm the chief investment officer. Good morning. My name is Daniel Mainye. I head the technology business. Good morning. I'm Benjamin Kenya, in charge of the education sector. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Wesley Ogada. I'm in the distribution department. Good morning, guys. 
My name is Christopher Ngoge, and I'm in charge of uh, quality assurance at Saiton. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Augustine Matata. I'm in finance. Good morning, everyone. My name is Abraham Biketi. I'm in charge of hospitality in Saiton. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Arita Mogeni. I'm in distribution. Morning, everyone. My name is Washumbuga. I'm a research assistant at Saiton. Good morning, everyone. I'm Martin Gitonga from Projects Management. My name is Maurice Odur. I'm from Investments. Thanks. Uh, we have uh, more members of uh, Saiton around, but I just took a sampling so that at least you know who is in, uh, in the room. Now, what uh, does Saiton do? Maybe I would start by putting it into very broad context. Uh, if you take an, what I would call an average human being, <coughs> they're interested in things. Uh, part of the reason why you are here this morning is information, knowledge, getting to understand uh, what is going on. So learning and growth is one core component. Uh, the other component is faith and spirituality. The reason why uh, maybe the, the Seventh-day Adventists are not with us here today or uh, a lot of us will be going to church tomorrow is uh, spirituality and worshipping and things like that. And then there's also health and well-being. Why we see our doctor, why we go running, why we go to the gym is that we want to stay uh, healthy. And then there's the fourth part, which is financial security. Everybody wants to pay uh, their bills. That's why we go to work, that's why we save, that's why uh, we invest. So uh, for us, we deal with that quadrant of financial security. Now, if you're going to invest, you have to choose a couple of uh, places you can invest in. You can buy equities, you can buy fixed income, you can put money uh, in bank uh, deposits. Uh, collectively, we call that uh, public markets or conventional uh, investments. Now, as an alternative to fixed income, equities, and, and bank deposits, there's another area that is called um, alternative investments, uh, which, con which is generally real estate and private equity. Now, as people who are in the investment business, when we looked at uh, when we looked at the returns for conventional products as a whole, uh, they return roughly 10 to 12 uh, percent. There's a slide I'll show uh, some, at some point showing you. Here is what alternative investments return, and here is what equities, fixed income, equities, uh, and, uh, and uh, bank deposits return. So we decided that as a group, we're going to focus primarily on alternative investments because they return anywhere between 18 to 25 percent compared to around 10 to 12, uh, 12 percent. So to really uh, try to um, articulate what Saiton uh, does, we get money from two main places, from individuals or from institutions. Individuals, it's mainly through our structured product uh, vehicle called Saiton Cash Management Solutions. And from institutions are like uh, people like Tallery. Tallery is a uh, seven billion US dollar asset manager in uh, Finland. They were the first one to back us when we broke from our pre previous employer to form uh, Cyton. For institutional investors, you just sit and write a bilateral contract. They've invested with us currently more than uh, 3 billion shillings. Uh, through Cyton Cash Management, we've collected 7 billion shillings. And through JVs with landowner, uh, landowners, another uh, roughly 6 billion shillings. When we get that money, our total balance sheet today is uh, 18 billion shillings. You can go check it on our website. We usually publish our financials. Our auditor is um, Grant Thornton, the sixth largest uh, auditor in the world. Get that money, what do we do with it? We have two main areas, real estate. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about the areas we invest. In real estate, we have 10 developments in various places in town. We tend to invest in places that have sound underlying economic trends. We really like Karen a lot. Karen has the highest concentration of schools anywhere in Kenya. So people care about education. And I talked about the four quadrants. Them is learning and growth. People care about education. That's why you'll find a lot of people wanting to stay in Karen so that they can send their kids to these uh, private schools. With satellite towns like Ruaka, Athi River, Ngong, those are the places where 
a lot of people who work, who work in Nairobi use them as uh, residential places. So in terms of um, growth, occupancy, yield, they are very attractive places to be. You will not find us investing in, let's say, residential in Kilimani, Kileleshua, Mthaiga, Spring Valley. The, the uh, potential for capital appreciation is very limited. In terms of um, demographics, we have more people uh, per square feet living in places like Waka compared to places like Mthaiga. So we go to places where we uh, the largest numbers. The only time you in those high-end suburbs is, for example, our mixed-use development in um, Kilimani. Uh, we will do a mixed-use development because if you are going to going to, if you are going to go to very high-end areas, if you go with just off, you end up with cases like Upper Hill where you have so many offices and very little occupancy. But if you do a mixed-use, for example, 14 uh, Riverside, people say that uh, there's oversupply of offices. Yes, you go to Upper Hill. You'll find offices that are not occupied, but you try to get an office in 14 Riverside, you can't. Why? Because 14 Riverside will offer you office, will offer you hotel, will offer you convenience, uh, shopping. So the only time you'll find us in the high-end place is where we are doing uh, mixed-use development. So real estate is one place we put money. Then we also put money in uh, private equity, particularly financial services, banking and insurance. And then all our developments have a component of education. If you talk about, for example, the Alma uh, in Ruaka, it's 450 units. Each unit would have four to five uh, individuals. So you are talking about a community of 2,000 people. If you have 2,000 people, you will need uh, uh, daycare centers. You will need nursery schools. If you look at, for example, our 1,000 acre development in uh, Athi River, you definitely need a full scale primary school, secondary school. So we decided instead of offering or partnering with other that share our values, let's just set up our own education uh, business. That's why Ben joined us uh, and he runs the site on education services. There's an element of hospitality in uh, mixed use developments, whether it's a hotel or service apartment. That's why I think I saw Abram uh, there. He joined us and he runs uh, site on uh, hospitality. All these things require technology. Uh, that's why we have Daniel, who runs our uh, site on technology business. We are, their, we are their largest client, but soon they'll be commercializing that initiative to be able to offer technology to uh, third-party uh, clients. So that's really site on in general, where we raise, uh, why, we are, why we are focused on alternative investment. It's the highest returning asset class, where we raise money, individual investors and institutions, and where we deploy that capital. In terms of just quick uh, facts, the 10 projects I've talked about currently have a uh, uh, total 82 billion in what I would call projects under mandate. Of this 82 billion, we've already raised 18 of it. In terms of offices, uh, six offices. We have uh, five here locally. We have the diaspora office in, in uh, Washington, D.C., and we are now beginning our, our uh, county uh, plan. We are opening an office in Nyeri by the end of this month. I don't know if Stephen is here. Stephen is going to be the regional manager for Mount Kenya region. Uh, in terms of staff, 275 uh, individuals. And in terms of projects, I already talked about uh, uh, 10 projects. Why, what is unique about us? Independent, independence and investor focus. One of the reasons why people have lost a lot of money, take any brand, whether it's Nakuma, Uchumi, KQ, uh, Chase Bank, Imperial. <coughs> the common theme ab among them is going to be governance and conflicts of interest. What we, the reason why we decided to form our own franchise is so that we can really focus on the interests of the, of the investor. If you take care of the investor and the investor does well, the firm will do well. If the firm does well, then of course we shall do well. So that's why we decided let's form a firm whereby there's no big brother, there's no body we are accounted for to other than uh, the interest of the client. We focus primarily on uh, alternative investment, very strong alignment. Every member of the firm is a shareholder. When you come to Saiton, of course, it's a very rigorous place to work. But when you get confirmed after three months, you get shares equal to three months of your salary. So, and of course, it, vests, it can't vest immediately, it invests over three years. So every member of the firm who has been confirmed is a shareholder. And then, um, uh, strong 
partners such as uh, Tallery of uh, Finland. Uh, I already talked about what we do in terms of collecting funds, investing in high returning uh, products and returning the funds to, to the client. This is a slide I was talking about in terms of returns. If you look at investment grade uh, real estate, and when I say investment grade real estate, it's different from going and buying um, land in Kitengela. For you to say it's an investment, you have to be able to have reach behind it. You have to uh, the probable amount of cash you will get back, the t those cash flows that you are taking. The reason why we have 10 uh, on not real estate research is so that we, that we have research than anyone else uh, in the market. If you look at uh, those returns, 10-year treasury, uh, I think these over the last six years has returned 12 and a half. Uh, Nairobi All Share Index, stock market 10%, 91-day T-bill, 9.6. You take the average is around 14% uh, and that I think includes uh, real estate. Most Kenyans are going to be invested on the uh, uh, budgets to the right, yet this is the highest returning asset class. Everybody can go out, buy real estate, do, do due diligence, complete the conveyancing. So our specialty is how do we take this return and convert it into an investment uh, instrument. All real estate we do, our target is that it returns anywhere between 22 and 25 percent, and then we are able to uh, pass on to the investor around uh, 18 percent. We try to make sure that after expense, after uh, distribution expenses, we are enjoying a margin of around 4 percent. When I showed you that 82 billion of projects under mandate, we are trying to drive it to 100 billion. That would now be our steady state uh, projects under mandate, so that as one matures or we sell off one, then we shall uh, bring in a, a, a new one into the pipeline. So if you have 100 billion of uh, real estate under mandate, you are paying 18 percent uh, per annum to the uh, investor. You pay another 1 percent distribution fee to the distributor, the financial uh, advisor, and then the cost of running the platform is another 1% in terms of just administration fee. You end up with a total cost of around 20% cost of capital. What you pass to the client, what you pass to the financial advisor, and what you use for administration. Then you make sure that on the other end you are collecting around 24%. So you enjoy a margin of around 4%. If you take 4% on 100 billion, our strategy is to be able to generate 4 billion of top line uh, every year. And if we're able to even spend just uh, a half or less than a half will be able to drop around two billion uh, Kenya shillings uh, to the top line. So if, if you just go back to uh, our strategy, collect money, put primarily in real estate, try to drive it to 100 billion of real estate under mandate at a cost of around 20% all in, and then be able to have a yield of around 24%. Of course, it will not always cost us 20%. The reason why we are driving to get to bulk up very quickly is so that we can get listed, be able to now offer our, our products to listed markets. If you are in listed markets, then your cost of funding will drop from around 20% to around 17%. We won't always have to pay 18% forever, but that's the route we had to go in the short term to be able to gain uh, bulk. Uh, I talked about where we, where we are, diaspora office in uh, North America, in Europe through Tallery, and then of course here uh, in Nairobi, and we soon are going to be looking into expanding into the region beyond just the county. We are looking at a deal currently in Kampala. Of course, corporate governance is very key. Chairman of the company is Professor Daniel Mugendi, the Vice Chancellor of uh, Embu University. We have Mother Bala, uh, who is uh, a very uh, well-known and renowned lawyer in the Asian community. We have Auntie Yusi, who represents Tallery. He actually uh, sits in this market. He sits right here in Nairobi. We have uh, NASA. NASA is Director of Information Science with WWF in uh, DC. Uh, the the unique proposition uh, NASA brings is uh, information uh, technology, very good in technology ideas. Uh, we have Maina, a well-known urban planner. We have Mike Bristow, who is the chairman of CDSC. Uh, Rose Kimoto, uh, founder of Kameme. 
Nancy, uh, Dr. Nancy Onyango, well known for corporate governance and risk management, also sits on the board of KCB. Madhav uh, Bandari, very good internal control. She's, he, he's part of our audit team, uh, audit committee. Myself as an executive director, Liz CIO, Patricia as a head of legal uh, and also a partner. Now, the vehicle that we use to collect money between individual investor and ourselves is actually its own company with its own board. The board of that, that vehicle are actually elected from the investors of that vehicle. People always ask, but how come you are able to take money from individuals? Uh, there is a section in the CMA Act. You can offer securities through public offers. Essentially, you can advertise it ev everywhere. If you go to uh, a page like um, there is a page in the nation that has all manner of numbers. If you are going to engage the public, then you have to go through a public. But if you are going to engage individuals, individual high net worth uh, investors, you can do it through private offers. So how do we then structure this vehicle? I mean, as investment, as just my institutionalized, they can partners, like they elect their own board, and then they are able to then govern them. Govern themselves. All they do is to tell us exactly how they want, they want the money invested, and we take the money and invest into uh, real estate. The chairman is Shaka Kwach. Uh, the vice chair is, Na uh, is Naomi. We have Viru. We have um, Mitesh. Auntie also sits here. They're also investors uh, in the fund. We have An Anthony Maina, who is a banker. And then uh, Morris represents us uh, in the board because we are also partners there as the, as the principal partner. And then we have uh, Doreen. Now, that, that's the board for the arm um, that we collect this money, as I said, we invest it into uh, real estate. Each of the real estate has its independent chair of the board. We have Jenny Duati who chairs the ALMA board and actually after this particular uh, presentation I think at 12.30 we've offered whoever wants to go see uh, any of uh, uh, some of these developments. ALMA is one that we are showcasing today. There will be a bus out there. You just register, hop onto it and you'll be able to go see the ALMA. We have Cairo Bachia who's chair of Taraji. We have Madhav who's chair of uh, the Ridge board. Auntie, uh, also a member of Taraji board, and you'll see Auntie all over the place because they are the largest institutional investor in Cyton. They have to protect their interests. NASA, who sits on the ALMA board, Christopher Kaemba, Newtown board, and then you have Ian Anderson, who sits on the Ridge board. Ian Anderson is also the managing uh, director of Superior Homes. Superior Homes is a developer for Green Park, the 700 units on uh, Mombasa Road, and we are also investors in Green Park, where we own 25% uh, of, of, the, of the farm. Uh, our unique proposition in the market, people always ask, why is Cyton going fast? There are a couple of things. Of course, we spend a lot of time to make sure we get the best talent, but our strategy of bringing real estate development. If you think about developers in, in this country, uh, developers like Suraya, King's Pride, King's Developers, they are mainly focused on development. When they want to fund their developments, they go to the bank. The all-in cost of funding in a bank, as I'll show you later, is 18%. Even though they say it's 14 by the time you add all fees, you are paying 18%. Now, when people, want to inv uh, when people are looking to invest in real estate, like insurance, asset managers, they spend a lot of time trying to understand the risk in that asset. There's nobody who's brought real estate development and investment management into one platform, onto one platform. That's why you have site on investment, collecting funds, set sending statements, talking to clients, talking to investors, and site on real estate doing uh, the development. So the financing capability is done through site on investment, Development capability is done through site on real estate, and we spend a lot of time on joint ventures of our 18 billion of capital. As I said in the beginning, five to six billion has come from um, landowners contributing land into JVs as capital. No one else has this in this market. You think about any, anyone else who's developing, they have not couple, coupled up real estate development and real estate finance onto one platform. We have end-to-end uh, -end capabilities. 
we have around 120, 150 individuals. When they were introducing themselves, you had people say they are from distribution, doing nothing other than two things. One, when they meet you, they want to collect money. Uh, we collect money directly from individuals and pay them the same thing that we would pay uh, to a bank, which is 18%, or they'll also sell you uh, real estate. Then we have the market research and site acquisition team. Everything we do has to be led by research so as, you, so as to de-risk it. Con once we've acquired the concept and project management team to deliver the product, and of course it has to be sold and managed at the end. Uh, those are some of our uh, real estate developments. Uh, Amara in Karen, the ridge on Ridgeways by the a bypass, C2 Village in Karen. Alma is one of those that you will see today. I believe you'll also pass by uh, the ridge. Taraji Heights also in Ruaka. Newtown, very long term development, 10 to, 10 to 15 years. It's a whole new city. Riveran in Ruiru, and of course, uh, Saiton Towers, which is the latest one, four acres development on, uh, in Kilimani. In terms of 82 billion, that number is thrown out a lot, so we thought that we should, we should show you exactly where it comes from. Amara Ridge project size is 1 billion, Alma project size 4.2 billion, Taraji Heights project size 2.5, the Ridge project size is 12.1. Newtown, 22 billion, Riveran, 15 billion, C2 Village, 5.5, Westlands, 0 0.8. These are serviced apartments that we are putting up. Saiton Towers is 16 billion, and then Project Karen. We are calling it Project Karen because if we go back to the previous slide, Amara Ridge is already 100% sold, and there are clients who want something similar to Amara Ridge. So we've currently signed up uh, another project we don't want to reveal exactly where it is until all the all the conveyancing is done but project Karen is now going to replace Amara Ridge and it's 2.1 uh, billion again as I said in Karen uh, these are some just some of the photos uh, that's the development 450 units uh, in Ruaka the show houses are ready uh, if you get a chance please go see them this afternoon or we are always taking people to our sites every uh, Saturday you can sign up online for any other day. Uh, that is the Amara project that is done. You have two kinds of houses. I can see here they only have the, you know, these are the modern houses or contemporary, and that is the classic uh, uh, unit. I talked about distribution model just to touch on it quickly. We do franchises. If you really like what Cyton is doing and you say, I want to develop by myself, we'll give you the template and of course we will share. You'll have to pay a, fr a franchise uh, royalty. We raise money from institutional investors. We have the diaspora office, private wealth through uh, Cyton uh, CMS. We have a lot of IFAs who, who also distribute uh, our products. We have these. Uh, Product reach is not our biggest offering, but uh, when you look at the at the core of Cyton, everybody comes from what I would call a working class uh, background. So we feel bad when somebody walks in with five thousand and says, "I want to invest." We don't want to turn them down, so we don't push the product hard. But when somebody has um, an amount that is below what is allowed under private offers, we channel them to Cyton Cooperative. I talked about diaspora, I talked about our technology pr platform, I've talked about the cooperative. In terms of high level financials, that's the balance sheet, total assets of uh, 18 billion. You can see what makes the asset base. Majority of it, of course, uh, is uh, real estate uh, investment. We also have this thing here we call active strategies where we invest in uh, financial services. We are the ninth largest shareholder in NIC and uh, top five institutional investor in KC, KCB Bank through that active uh, strategies portfolio. Uh, that's the income, no, that's the other side of the balance sheet, um, showing exactly how the assets are capitalized. We'll actually be releasing our, because I think this is as of September Q3, we'll be releasing our financials very soon and we publish our financials every, every quarter. That's the income statement. One of the things that usually generates a lot of discussion is fair value gains. You can see here to date fair value gains are almost a billion shillings. The total profitability is 467. If you are a developer, your core business is generation of fair value gains. 
that's the number we look at and that's every day we work to make sure that if we buy land for let's say 10 million shillings we come up with architectural concepts and we're able to sell uh, a building for almost uh, let's say 20 million i'm just giving that as an example the land is to is um, 10 million let's say my cost of development is another 5 million so my total cost is 15 but if i sell it and i have a sale agreement for 20 million i have a 5 million kenya shillings fair value gain now the only thing is that you cannot take it immediately into your income statement because you have to develop so by the time you are constructing let's say uh, 10 percent you've constructed 10 percent you'll book 10 percent of the fair value gain by the time you've contract uh, constructed another 20 percent you'll book another 20 percent but to be able to turn that fair value gain into cash you have to complete construction and sell it and get the cash into your hands so this fair value gain is not just based on an evaluation it is driven primarily by sales contracts that we have sold to individuals and we book the gain on a percent of completion uh, basis and as as they pay the they are, as we complete and they pay for the buildings it moves from the fair value uh, gain uh, position up to the revenue uh, position csr very important you have to give you you have to uh, when you do good you also you, when you do well uh, you also have to do good we focus mainly on three things entrepreneurship very close to us because uh, it's through uh, new ideas that we were able to form the farm and we run, we run the site on eHub program which has around three phases you can check it out online training and mentorship very important uh, very important to us primarily through our site on young leaders program almost 60 percent of the farm we hired from uh, school people always say that uh, you need experience to be hired. Cyton is one place where when we can help it, we hire people uh, who have uh, no experience. We find that it's very easy for them to fit into the Cyton culture. Financial literacy, we usually have the wealth management training every Saturday uh, morning. We look at it as a way to give back, but of course it's also strategic to our <coughs> marketing because when you give people information, they are, they are better able to make uh, investment uh, decisions. I talked about our site on Young Leaders program. I've talked about entrepreneurship, finance, financial literacy. I wanted to, to touch a little bit about structured product. Uh, what's a structured product? Because that's really our core business. I know I talked about uh, CMS, but CMS is a structured uh, uh, product. It's a subset of alternative investment. Alternative investment, as I said, is real estate, private equity. Structured product is another uh, type of alternative investment. It's highly customized, uh, it's tailor-made, it's non-standard. And the reason why it is done that way is that for you to reach certain returns, for example, if you cannot buy real estate brick and mortar, yet you want the return, somebody has to structure that 25% into an investment instrument like CMS for you to be able to get it. So it's very highly customized and that is why it does not fit into the regular regulated products. If you wanted to do CMS and connect it to real estate, if you look at our CMA Act, it envisions unit trust, it envisions pension funds, it does not envision structured uh, products. That's why you find that in most cases, they are offered through uh, private offers. Uh, I'll just walk you through how somebody can get 18% uh, return, because that tends to be a question. Total cost of credit today, if you look at what a bank charges here, it will be around 14%. Uh, percent. If you take third party costs and you take other interest related charges, you'll be getting to around uh, 16, 18, 20 percent. And I'll just give you an example. You can go verify this for yourself. You go to Kenya Bankers website, they have this interest rate uh, calculator where you go put in all the details to know how much a bank is charging you. So this is the loan estimate. Uh, from KCB Group, you can see that I think this is for one, one, one million. If you go borrow for one year, they'll charge you 17.22. You can go verify that for yourself. Then we took another one. We took the three largest uh, banks by deposit gathering. Equity Bank, the total cost will be 20.63. Again, this means that if I go get one year money from equity, I'll have to pay 20%. If I go to Corp Bank, I'll pay 17.22. If I take the average cost, at the very end, it's a little hidden, 
I'm paying around 18.4%. 18 so if I go to the bank, I'll have to pay 18% anyway for me to access capital. Now, what we have then done is to say, why don't we, instead of going to the bank and paying the 18%, let me go directly to individuals and get the same 1 million shillings, though these days uh, the, the minimum has dropped up to 100,000. Let me, and 100,000 is, you cannot go below 100,000 because then you'll be violating uh, uh, our CMA Act uh, rules. I'll go directly to the individual and give them 18%. So people always ask, how come a bank can't offer me 18%? How come money markets can't offer me 18%? How come fund managers can't offer me 18%? You are looking at our returns relative to money markets. You are supposed to look at our returns relative to the um, loan market. We price off the loan market, we don't price off the money market. And all we've done when we say structured products, in this case we've structured out the bank. Instead of borrowing from the bank at 18%, we are borrowing directly from individuals at uh, 18%. We move a lot faster. It doesn't take us 9 months, 12 months to uh, borrow money, we can borrow it from an individual. Uh, if, I, if we need 100 million, you just need 100 individuals giving you 1 million shillings. We have 150 people talking to individuals, so you just need each one of them to go bring you 100 million, something that you can do in a week. To borrow 100 million from a bank, it will take me 9 to 12 months. If I can get my 100 million in a week, I can move faster in real estate compared to the developer who is going to take almost a year to get the same 100 million. Then people ask then, what is the regulatory framework? We decided to copy it directly from uh, the CMA Act. There's a regulation, uh, I think it's called public, somewhere, the Capital Markets Securities Public Offers Listing Disclosures Regulation 2002. It, it is, we, the section that we have um, taken out to show you, essentially after writing everything you have to conform to when you are doing a public offering, Section 20 then says this regulation, which is the CMA Act, shall not apply to A, government bonds, I mean government securities, and B, private offer. So if you're going to do a private offer, you don't have to comply with the public listing regulation. Then it goes ahead and says, defines what is a private uh, offer. And it gives around nine conditions for a private offer. And you, all you need is to comply to one condition. You don't have to, to comply to all uh, nine. Our CMS product complies to this section 21B, which essentially says you must, you will be offering it to a group of people. So for us, we only deal with members of, of uh, our, the partners in our investment uh, vehicle. Before you invest in site on CMS, you have to join as a partner because it's essentially an institutionalized uh, charmer. Then there's a section that talks about you only deal with people, with a restricted uh, group of people who you believe, uh, who the offerer reasonably believes to be sufficiently uh, knowledgeable. And then there's another section that talks about the securities are not freely transferable. Essentially, you cannot take site on CMS and go sell it in the market. You have to deal, you have to come back to me if you need your money back. And I think there's also a section that talks about the minimum. As you can see, section F says the minimum is 100,000 shillings. So essentially what CMA is saying, Anybody who can open an account with at least 100,000 shillings that does not need public protection. The, the reason the CMA Act exists is to protect the general investing public. If you have 1,000 shillings as the maximum you can use to open an account, an account, the regulations essentially say you might not be that sophisticated or you might not be able to hire lawyers and accountants, therefore you need the protection of the CMA. But if you can walk in and open an account for 100,000, the Act suspects that you are knowledgeable enough, and if you are not, then at least you can hire an accountant or a lawyer. So that's the regulatory framework. We operate under the private offers uh, regulatory uh, framework. This is just to show how money moves from CMS into a development. I don't have to go through it because I already described the way we would collect money from an individual put it uh, through CMS, put it into a development, sell that, that development, earn a 25% return, give 18% to the investor, and we keep uh, the balance. Uh, that's CMS growth starting from 200, uh, 
that's around 200 million in December 2014 and currently is just, uh, as I said, uh, roughly uh, 7 billion shillings, exactly 6.9 6 .9 billion or 7 billion uh, shillings and continues to grow. This is exponential growth. You can't possibly find things that grow this fast uh, in this particular uh, market. Uh, frequently asked questions, what is a structured high yield product? Because when, when we talk about CMS, that's a structured high yield product. I think I already uh, talked about it. It is a product structured by a professional and tailored to the investor to be able to access a pocket of return in the market that you cannot access using conventional product. How come you're able to offer 18%? I think I've already answered that. How come no one else is doing this in the market? When you go to a bank, the best they will offer you is 7% based on, on the law. In most cases, they'll offer you zero. But because they are lending out their money at 18%, there's no way they can offer you 18% because they have bills uh, to pay. So the only way you can offer 18%, you have to have the underlying product. And we are yet to find a product that can consistently offer 18% other than real estate. So you have to be a real estate developer who does research to make sure that before you invest, you are going to be able to earn 25%. Uh, percent. And once you earn 25%, that's the only way you can over, offer 18%. I don't know anybody else in this market who is doing real estate development and also has an investment management arm that is linking to investors. That's, that's the reason why it still remains a space for Cyton to play essentially without any competitor. We get this question a lot. Uh, People go to the banks and they want to withdraw money uh, to bring to Cyton and the relationship manager starts talking about how Cyton is shaky, are you sure about your money? The reality is um, it's, it's competition. Uh, if a bank cannot compete with us, so the only thing they possibly can do is to badmouth the brand, but this is not new. When Equity Bank started as a building society 13 years ago and converted to a bank to focus on the bottom of the pyramid, consistently established bank, banks were bashing equity bank, but it just continued focusing on that growing market. Starting from a building society 13 years ago, today equity bank is the largest bank by market capitalization. Uh, M-Pesa, when it started 10 years ago, banks really bashed it. You are, you are not supposed to transfer money. CBK questioned them at some point, even some M-Pesa uh, was uh, closed down. Today M-Pesa is the most used means of uh, uh, transferring money. When Uber came here four, four years ago, there were street protests. Everybody, uh, the taxi drivers kind of were wondering, you don't have a right to, to operate taxis in this uh, market, though they were bringing prices down by almost uh, 40, 50 uh, percent. But today, Uber is the most used way of taking uh, taxi. So there's nothing new. When, there's a, when a brand threatens existing uh, players or it threatens the establishment, they tend to try to tarnish it, but it really never works because of these investors, and we have 3,000 investors here, starting, we, remember we formed the firm in September of, uh, September of uh, 2014. This only shows CMS assets under management because by December 2014, we already had three billion commitment from Tallery. But the people that uh, the market is really worried about are the local individuals. By December, we had collected 200, uh, is that 200 million or 200,000? I can't, I think that's actually 200,000 in December 2014, only 200,000. But as we continue delivering, by June 2015, we were 200 million. Then by end of 2015, 1.5 billion. Now it's 7 billion. Behind this 7 billion are 3,000 individuals. There's not a single one of them that has ever, ever lost money with us or who is unhappy. Most of the people, not most, or every person who bad mouths bad mouth Cyton or has an issue with the brand is not an investor. And we continue to grow because these investors bring us 10 new investors, 10 new, or at least 10 new investors uh, every single week. So as, as long as you continue to deliver value, 
the same way equity has been delivering for the last 13 years, the same way M-Pesa has been delivering for the last 10, 10 years, and the same way Uber has been delivering for the last four years, people will hate on your brand because you are taking market share away from them. But as long as you are delivering value to your clients, you continue to grow exponentially. That's why we are always uh, just focused on our uh, execution, because that's the best way for us to grow. Asante.